All right, boys, we are back, and it's time to head into year nine with our Arizona Coyotes. What a great eight years it's been. We've made it into the playoffs seven times, all right, uh, seven times in a row as well. It was a disappointing Stanley Cup Finals last year where we lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets, but you know what? It's still an amazing feat to become the top two or second best team in the NHL, right? So I'm still happy with the season, and the year before that, we won the Presidents and Stanley Cup, so... You know, it sucks that we lost it last year. We barely made it into the playoffs, but we can rewrite the ship with a very good year this year. And the first thing is getting our regular season back on track because I agree, we have the same kind of roster and if we fall into the same hole, we might not have made the playoffs and had the chance to win the Stanley Cup, right? So I have a few moves I was thinking about making, but um, I want to get to your comments and your fan art first, all right? But just remember, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but in the last video, I said that uh, this video may just be a summary of the entire NHL and the rosters of each team. What I might do when I'm done reading the comments and the fan art and uh, making some roster changes, I might simply simulate all the way up to the first game of the NHL season and then just take the rest of the video going through all the lines of each NHL team their forward defense and goaltender I won't look at their prospects but I want to know which teams are the powerhouses in the NHL now we're eight years in so I want to this is what I want to do with them um, every year kind of it's I always forget about it but I want to do a summary of the NHL before each NHL season all right so before we get to that let's just get into your comments there was a bunch of them you guys calling out GM superb man all right so the first one is a lineup suggestion. First line, the Big Mac, Barzell, and Petrie. I think I have that right now. Second line, Kopitar, Horvat, and Yakupov. Now that's interesting. People want Bo Horvat on the second line center. So before we go ahead with that, I'll just tell you guys why Horvat is a career third liner. You look at his overall, right? 86. It looks pretty good, but you got to remember that overall number is just a summary of the individual stats. You look at his individual stats, he's not an offensive player. His passing is only 82. Offensive awareness is 83. His shooting is not bad in this wrist shot power, but accuracy 82 and an 84. Where he gets his overall number from is his skating, which is 5-star, his physical, which is 4.5-star, and, and his defense, which is 4.5-star. He's a defensive-minded player, so that's why I have him on the third line. I, I, I want a strong third line, and Horvat's also a penalty killer. He's been flourishing in that third line position. When I picked him up, he was an 84. He's gone up to an 86. All right, so I'm leaving Bo Horvat as the uh, third line center and Kopitar is staying in the middle, all right? Uh, so back to the comment. Kopitar, Horvat, and Yakupov. Third line, Pierlini, Strom, and Lou Morris. We got to move Lou Morris up to the uh, second line now. He's an 85 grinder. I don't even know. This guy could be the limit with Lou Morris. I could have a 90 overall grinder. You never know how, the, how this guy is going to grow. So I want to give him top six time, all right? Um, so Lou Morris has got to play on the second line. Uh, Bo Horvat's got to play on the third line. And then Z Smith, McMillan, and Roussel, this guy says the same thing. So, the only thing that this guy was saying was to switch um, Lou Morris and Horvat lines and put Horvat in the second line center. So, I'm not going to do that, but I'll read the rest of it. Petrie on the right side is natural position because you want him to keep growing. Horvat on the second line because his offensive stats are bound to be better than Lou Morris's. Yes, but it's, it's uh, where does Kopitar go then? You know, you're putting Kopitar on the wing. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, if Kopitar has better faceoffs, then put him in the middle and move Horvat over. Now, his stats are not... He's not a winger. He doesn't have winger types of stats. This gives your top six two power forwards, two snipers, and two playmakers. Yeah, the player type is nice, but nah, man. I got to go with Bo Horvat on the third line. Uh, Morris on the third line because he his three and a half star shot, 81 passing, and 76 offensive awareness will hinder Kopitar and Yakupov's offensive skills. Strom's faceoff rating isn't the greatest, but it's still better than Barzell's, and that whole third line in, are in their natural positions. All right, so... He's saying that Lou Morris's offensive stats aren't the greatest either. And yeah, that's true, just like uh, Bo Horvat. But the difference between Bo Horvat and Lou Morris is Lou Morris is 22 years old with a four and a half gold star potential. I don't know, like he could turn into a Ryan Callahan type of offensive grinder. He could turn into uh, David Clarkson before the roster update. I know, David Clarkson shit, trust me. But he's like an 84 overall grinder. He's got like 84 for offensive awareness, a de decent passing rating. So I want to see how grinders grow. Um, he's 22 years old. I want to give this guy the chance. He's 85 overall. I'm putting him on the second line. And I agree, Kopitar and Yakupov's offensive stats may drop a little bit, but... I have Barzell and Petrie on the first line, all right? I, I think we're going to get enough goal scoring from these guys. So thanks for the comment, but I'm going to keep uh, 
Horvat on the third line and Lou Morris on the second line. All right. Next comments. Johnny, going back to the regular season last year, your penalty kill was terrible. One of the worst in the league. That's true, actually. You have basically the same roster this year, with the exception of a few players growing and a few players getting worse. If the penalty kill was that bad last year with that roster, I can't see it being any better this year. This guy speaks the truth. I suggest you make a trade to replace Dylan Strom on the third line. It doesn't look like he's getting any better, and an 83 overall playmaker on the third line that gets no power play time seems pretty useless to me. He's not physical at all, and his defensive awareness is only 82. Trade for a dedicated, defensive-minded, third-line grinder penalty killer. All right, so he's got a good point about the penalty kill, but... I don't think, um, I don't think, like, hang on, you know what, let me just, I don't want to speculate. Let me take a look at the plus minus of Horvat, Pierlini, and Strom last year during the regular season. See, I mean, during the regular season, see, I think Dylan Strom is fine on the third line. He was a plus 14, and uh, Bo Horvat was, must have been a plus as well then. Uh, plus 10, there you go, and Pierlini, let's see. Pierlini was a plus nine, all right? I agree with the first part of your uh, comment, how our penalty kill, our penalty kill was the big problem last year. That's how we were allowing a lot of goals against. I don't think it was our five on five, so I want to leave our uh, third line the way it is. They're all plus players. That's what I mean about my third line. I want my third line to be a good line, and I think it's pretty good with Horvat, Pierlini, and Dylan Strom, all right? So... I'll keep an eye on Dylan Strom, but I don't think that's our major problem right now. I do agree with you about the penalty kill, though. That is something I want to get under control. All right? And the last comment, hello from Hank Hill once again. Just for this year, I will double my propane deal for all Arizona Coyote players if they bring home the cup. That's right. 20 fucking percent off all propane and propane accessories. Oh, my God. Hank Hill, man, he wants to see his Arizona Coyotes win the Stanley Cup. All right, Hank, I, I hear that. I'm going to do my best to turn this team into a Stanley Cup winner this year, just for you and just for that 20% uh, off, man. That's too good to pass up. All right? So thank you for the comments. Uh, you know what? Hang on one second. I just go blow my nose. Ah, uh, that's better. Man, I haven't had to do that in a long time, eh? All right, so we're done with the comments. Now let's go to some fan art. Up first, what the hell? Oh, man, we got another movie. June of 2023, EA Films presents Batman vs. Superb, man. <laughs> the, midget, the midget that used to run the league is now lobbying for GM's... Oh, he's trying to take my freaking spot. He's lobbying for the GM spot in Arizona with support from the head of Biscorp. Oh, my God. And Superb. Man's popularity sinking like a stone. Are you kidding me? This is looking like a face-off to the death from director Michael Bay. Oh, there's going to be tons of explosions. Nick Cage and Peter Dinklage stars as Johnny Superman and Gary Bettman. Peter Dinklage is playing Gary Bettman? Are you freaking kidding me? He's too legendary to play Gary Bettman. The guy's in Game of Thrones, uh, Destiny, uh, X-Men, and you're giving him a part as Gary Bettman? Nah, son, that doesn't work. I'll take Nicolas Cage, because he goes crazy in some of his uh, videos. He'd do a great job replicating the rage from GM Superb, man. <laughs> but Dinklage is Bettman? Come on, that's a damn insult to freaking Dinklage. Come on, Jesus. Bettman versus Superb, man. What is that? Hang on, I gotta zoom in here. Jesus, the font is so... Now in six... <laughs> now in 60? What the hell does that even look like? All right, so thank you for that one. That looks good. Uh, Corey Perry, number 10. Oh, the Arizona Coyotes, they raised his, root, his number to the roof. He's only here for two years or one and a half years, but he brought us a Stanley Cup. Meanwhile, in Anaheim, oh my god, Anaheim. <laughs> Perry's number is getting raised in uh, Anaheim. You know what? To me, it makes sense that Corey Perry would have his number raised in Anaheim. We only had him for a year and a half. He won like two Stanley Cups in, uh, what was it, one? One Stanley Cup in Anaheim. There might have been another one um, in this GM mode that I'm forgetting about. But yeah, that makes sense for them to raise the jersey in Anaheim. Uh, Nicholas, well, another Nicholas Cage movie, The Big Mac. <laughs> Nicholas Cage is playing GM Superman and The Big Mac. All right. If I can't win a cup, I win Johnny's girl. What? Holy shit. Nick, the Big Mac is stealing my girl. What the hell is he going to do? Take her to the drive-thru of McDonald's on the first date? Give me a freaking break. Get out of here, freaking Big Mac. We got bigger fish to fry, man. We got to win the Stanley Cup this year. Get the, get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you guys, man. Uh, next one. I can taste better. Just add a C to my sandwich. Ooh, the Big Mac lobbying for the captaincy spot on the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, just kidding. One more year. Keith Yandel. <laughs> See, that's why the motivational speech didn't work, Keith. Just because in the back of your mind, you knew you were coming back this, uh, this year. He didn't get it through. The emotion didn't get through. God damn it. Uh, F you, Tarky. Lou will beat your ass. <laughs> Very nice. I have hope. Yeah, man. We're sticking with Brandon Hope. He's our goaltender. I still have hope in him. He had a great playoff run. Uh, next, don't put me on the shelf yet. I'm back. <laughs> Keep the handle. He's not giving up. He wants one more chance at the Stanley Cup. 
Uh, USA, USA takes gold the 2022 World Cup of Hockey. Oh my god, you guys are giving me novels to read here. After Emerson Edom scores the golden goal for USA. Ah, oh, damn it. Lucas Petrie says, We should have had GM Superman pick the team. I was playing with Danny Heatley for God's sakes. I didn't even know he was still alive. Why is Danny Heatley on Team Canada? What the hell? Emerson Edom responds by saying, Superman doesn't know how to manage a team. What? Just look at that goof Lou Morris playing on the second line. What did Lou <laughs> What did Lou and Johnny do last year in the playoffs? Lose to me. Oh, you little bastard. Emerson Edom. I'll remember that. Next time Lou Morris gets a game against the Columbus Blue Jackets, it's going to knock your block off. Uh, one more year. <laughs> Hashtag play for Yandel. Yeah, this is definitely going to be Keith Yandel's last year. Ho well, hopefully. Jeez, I can't hold on to him forever. And last but not least, oh, we got another headline here. All hockey news. Oh, freaking data drop. Here we go. Here we freaking go. 2BC News, Premier Edition. Drunken crash? He got in an, he got in an accident? Evgeny Dadunov crashes after a night out in the town celebrating Arizona's loss. Oh no! I don't wish that upon my worst enemy. After celebrating the loss of the Arizona Coyotes to the Columbus Blue Jackets, Evgeny Dadunov went to the club Purple Haze. <laughs> <laughs> With Ryan Motarki, Paul Beeson, that fucking hell. Oh, they're all getting together. Emerson Edom and Rowan Polak. At the club, the five got drunk together. The four others decided to go home by taxi, but dad enough to decided to drive home. You raging Russian goofball. Russians don't drive in cabs. They fucking drive whenever they're drunk. At an intersection, dad enough... Uh, drove through the red light leading to the car crash. He caused it. Although crashing at over 70 miles per hour, Dadunov survived and is in perfect condition. He states, I never regret my decision, and I hope GM Superman has another bad year. What about the guy he crashed into? It's all well and good that Evgeny Dadunov was okay, but 70 mile per hour crash going through an intersection? And he had a head-on car crash? What about the other guy? Friggin' Dadunov, man. You raging Russians. In your vodka, driving drunk. Jesus Christ. All right, so there, there's the fan art for today. You guys are going crazy with your fan arts now, man. <laughs> All right, hang on. I want to make sure I save that. Okay, so we're done listening to the analysts. We're done listening to the fans sending in <laughs> letters and emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, so what I want to do is I do want to simulate up and take a look at the rest of the teams, but I had a huge trade in mind. I've already done some pre-scouting for this trade. All right. I think I've gone eight years here in, uh, in Arizona without coming up with a huge blockbuster trade. I've built a team. But I think there's one asset that I could move to replace or to turn into another asset that not only makes us better for this year, but it's something that our team needs for the future. And that is a top two defenseman. All right. I want that 20% off of uh, Hank Hill's propane. So we got to We got to try to turn this around for our team. So the player that I had in mind, now this is a blockbuster trade, boys. This is a huge freaking trade. I'm going to get a lot of comments saying it's not realistic, blah, blah, blah. All right, but I'm doing my best to make this realistic. I've already done a pre-scout. From the New Jersey Devils. So I'm trading to the Eastern Conference, all right? I'm going to go after their stud defenseman, Darcy Jones. 90 overall, 24 years old, two years left at a steep contract, but I can afford it. All right. There you go. We go in and take a look at his individual stats. This is what you guys are talking about, right? When you guys were saying all in the past, you need a top two defenseman. You need a bona fide top two defenseman. Well, here he is. And I like that he's a two-way defenseman, but he focuses more on the defensive aspect of the game. You look at that defensive awareness, 93, shot blocking, 89, stick checking, 92. Physical category, 84, 91, 86. Fighting is only 71, but that's okay. Strength is an 88. His discipline is at 87, and he's decent offensively, all right? Passing is 86. Offensive awareness, 84. He's got a decent shot, and he's only 24 years old, and he's still getting better. But I don't care about that. I care about the 90 overall because of the defensive categories, all right? Now, the problem with this guy is, I know you guys are saying, why would New Jersey trade away a 24-year-old 90 overall defenseman? Well, if you look at him, right, drafted third overall in 2018. All right, and you look at this career playoff game since 2018. They've only been to one playoff series with this guy in their roster. All right, see career playoff game six. You look at his stats for the last few years. Uh, 24 points, 34 points, 30 points, but he's been a minus player every single year, all right? And in the playoffs, he was a minus four. So you think about it from the New Jersey Devils perspective, you know, it's it's 
it's kind of believable that they need to change something up, all right? Now, if I'm going after this guy, I got to give up something big. First of all, we got to free up the cap space. So Chris Letang would be the guy going out. 35 years old, one year left at 5.250, all right? They're clearly not really a playoff team anyway, so this guy replaces the defenseman for this year's um, season, all right? Now, don't worry. That's not, what I'm, that's, not, that's not all I'm doing. The next one, this is where the trade starts to make sense. Travis Little. That's right. My draft pick from the Columbus Blue Jackets a few years ago, I drafted him fourth overall in 2021, all right? So um, I don't think I showed you guys this. Hang on. Darcy Jones, he was drafted third overall in 2018, all right? Travis Little was drafted fourth overall in 2021. So, you know, they're getting a younger stud forward for their current stud defenseman, all right? And they're getting Chris Letang back that helps out their defenseman this year. The reason I'm trading away Travis Little is because, you know, he's 20 years old, he's 79 overall, but his potential, you know, it's up there, but why isn't his trade value up there even more? You know what I mean? I've had so many flops in this GM mode series, I don't want to have another one, and I need a top two defenseman. And when it comes to our forwards... I already have like a bunch of forwards for the future. Lucas Petrie is 91 overall at 22 years old. Barzell is 89 overall at 25 years old. Yakupov is 89 at 28 years old with three years left on his deal. All right, so I don't need to worry. I, Yakupov would be the guy I trade when he's 32, 33 to get another top six forward coming back, right? McMillan, 24 years old, 87 overall. Lou Morris, 20, uh, 22 years old, 85 overall, right? So one, two, three, four, five. I already have five top six forwards that I don't need to worry about for at least five years, four or five years. So where does Travis Little fit in? He does technically fit in, but then Lou Morris goes down or we need to find a center to replace Anze Kopitar, all right? So I'd rather use Travis Little to get a stud of a defenseman coming back. So a third overall pick for a fourth, fourth overall pick kind of makes sense. Latang is to make their team better for this year to replace David Jones. And I'm going to just make this trade completely realistic, all right? It's going to make sure that I didn't rip off the computer. My first overall pick as well, all right? I want to have a good year. If we don't make the play, Playoffs, that's going to be a huge trade that New Jersey made up for him or from us because that's going to be a good draft pick. But I don't think it's going to happen if we get that 90 overall defenseman. All right. So Chris Letang, Travis Little, and a first round pick from this year for a 90 overall 24 year old defenseman. You guys let me know if it's realistic, but I'm going through with it. Will it go through? Yes, it did. I doubt anybody will think the New Jersey Devils came out on the short end of the stick. So they got what they needed. Travis Little. It would have been nice if I could use him, but it's not like we got nothing back here, boys. Boom. There it is. Boom. Top two defensemen. Like everyone freaking wanted. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Everyone wanted that top six defenseman, and now we have it. So let me just... Uh yeah, you know what? I won't bore you with the line changes. Let me just quickly do the line changes myself. So here we go. I already went through all the lines for you guys, and we got the line changes. So it's going to look like this. McMillan, Barzell, Petrie, Lou Morris, Kopitar, Yakupov, Pierlini, Horvat, Strom, McMillan, Smith, Roussel. All right, very familiar offensive core. Now defense, this is where it gets interesting. David Jones with Oliver Ekman, Lars, Darcy Jones, sorry, Darcy Jones with Oliver Ekman Larson. All right, so the two-way defenseman on the first line with the offensive defenseman. Now, I went with Keith Yandel on the second pairing with Tyson Berry. I know that Keith Yandel doesn't have the greatest defensive stats, but we've bolstered up our defense everywhere else. He's going to play alongside of Tyson Berry. All right, yeah, the first line is going to get the most ice time. And Zadorov might have been the reason why we were taking so many penalties last year because he was on the top four. All right, so I'm going to put him down the top six with Jesse Mills, and these guys are going to be penalty killers for us now if we start to lose some games i can always move the door off back up right but uh keith yandel with tyson berry there you go i want to get some offense from our uh uh, our top six, I want an offensive defenseman there. Power play looks like that. All right. Uh, actually, no, no. I forgot to do. There you go. McMillan, Barzell, Petrie, Yakupov. Oh, I actually forgot to do this one. Hey, <laughs> Lou Morris. There you go. Kopitar, Yakupov, and Lou Morris. Yandel, ba Barry, Jones, and Ekman Larson. Yep. Yeah, you know what it was? I did the defense. There you go. That's easy, though. Barzell, Petrie, Kopitar, Yakupov. Yep. Penalty kill. Horvat, Lou Morris, Zadorov, and Jones. All right. So that's got to be a good defense. Defensive penalty kill now. Jesus, give me a break. Uh, Zach Smith, Pierlini, Tyson Berry, and Jesse Mills. All right. Three man penalty kill looks like that. Four on four lines look like that. All right. And our extra attackers are going to be Barzell and Darcy Jones. All right. So I want to hear what you guys have to say about that trade. I know I'm going to get it. Oh, that was unrealistic. I tried to make it. 
Like, obviously, the New Jersey Devils wouldn't want to give up a player like that, right? But they didn't make the playoffs with them. They haven't been a good team, so I replaced their defenseman with Chris Letang. I give them a forward prospect who's four years younger, who was drafted at about the same time, and a first-round pick from this year. I think it, I think it kind of makes sense, all right? So now... We're all the way up here at the first game of the season. I skipped the preseason for you guys. Now let's do what I wanted to do. We're not going to do any simulating in this video. We're just going to quickly go through all the teams and take a look at what they have, all right? So the Anaheim Ducks will go first. There you guys go. I'm only going to do a quick look. You guys can pause it and uh, take a real look if you want. Do I want to do goalies? You know what? We'll do goalies second. It'll be a lot easier to go through all the teams than do goalies second. All right, so there's the Anaheim Ducks. Whoa, hang on a second here. Do, do, do. Arizona, Boston. All right, yeah, they don't really look to have the greatest first line. Dougie Hamilton doesn't look bad, though. Uh, come on now, Jerry, go. Buffalo, Felino, Gergensons. Yeah, Gergensons looks pretty good. 288s down the middle. That's not bad for Buffalo. Defense, damn, McCabe, 92. He was another guy I was looking at, but nah, uh, to hell with that. Uh, Ty was that Tyler Benson? Yeah, Tyler Benson, 92. Sam Bennett, 81. Yeah, it's not the greatest first line right there. They got one good player. That's about it. Their defense looks a little bit weak there in Calgary. Uh, Carolina, you know what? It's quicker to do it this way if I alternate back and forth from defense to offense. There you go. There's defense for Carolina. There's offense. Lindholm was 88. Jordan Stahl, Jeff Skinner. All right. Chicago, Taves, Patrick Kane are still there. All right. Defense. Okay, very good. Colorado. Yeah, see, I don't want to talk too much about all this. It'll take the... Whoa! -ho -ho! There you go, Colorado. Nathan McKinnon. And they probably have Marchand still in the net as well. Nate McKinnon, 94. Holy crap. Landeskog, 88. O'Reilly, Duchesne. Yeah, they look like they have a very good top six. My God. Columbus, there they, there they are. The team that won the Stanley Cup last year. Jeez, man, that sucked. Dallas. Tyler uh, Sagan. Jamie Benn. Nakushkin is an 88. Eakin is an 88 down the middle. They don't have a bad team. Defense. Very nice, very nice. Detroit. There's that Fitzgerald guy that I was thinking about trading for last year. 92 two-way forward down the middle. Not too bad. Man, Anthony Mantha only ended up being 81 overall. That's not good at all. All right, there is their defensive core. Their defensive core looks pretty good. Ouellette and uh, Devlin on the first line. Edmonton. Looks like they've solved their defensive problems. Uh, offense. There you go. Yeah, so they still have the Hall, Nugent Hopkins, Everly combination, which is tearing it up for them. Florida. All right, Barkov, Huberto, yep, Ekblad, Malak. Oh, I should have drafted Malak instead of Pilon. Look at that. Ended up being Malak was 88 overall. That would have been nice to have. Oh, well, got a Stanley Cup. That's all I care about. L.A., all right, L.A. does not look like they have the greatest first line anymore. They're missing that Anze Kopitar. Uh, Minnesota, Conacher, Coyle, Niederreiter, hey, they're a little bit low as well. Yeah, mid-80s everywhere for Minnesota. Montreal, yeah, P.K. Subban, Jared Tenorti is 89. Holy shit. Galchenyuk, 88. Pacioretty, 88. So they still have a very good first line there in Montreal. Nashville, all right. Forsberg, only 86. Defense, yeah, we face these guys in the playoffs. Oh, I didn't mean to go to goalie right there. Schroeder's in the backup position. New Jersey, all right. So this was the trade. I took away their top two defensemen. Yeah, man, even with Connor McDavid and Gauthier on the first line, they still couldn't make the playoffs. All right, Reed Boucher. Yep. So let me know. Let me know what you guys think of it. See, but that that's why I think the trade was even more likely to happen. They already they did have a ton of defensemen still. They have Jelena, who's an 89. Merrill's an 87. Uh, Brain is an 85. Luke's is an 83, and he's four and a half star. I remember that. Adam Larson is an 84. All right. So you imagine that guy's in there. They could use some goal scoring, couldn't they? So there was my. Uh, that's my trade. I'm sticking with it. Uh, the Islanders. All right, Hamannick and Griffin Reinhardt. All right, yeah, Johnny T is still way up there. Rangers, all right, yep, and Panic, what the hell? They really lost some people now. McDonough, okay. Ottawa, Carlson still, oh, they got some pretty good defense there. Uh, Jams, 85, all right. Philadelphia, Dan McKenzie, look at that, 97 overall, my God. Claude Drew is a second-line center. Johnny Goudreau, well, if I, got, uh, if I got McKenzie, I wouldn't have Petrie and Lou Morris, though, right, so... I'm still fine with my team. Luke Shen and Michael Delzaster. Ooh, that, they don't have the greatest defense there. Pittsburgh, Olimata, and Derek Pouliot. I see Crosby and Malkin now. Oh, Crosby's an 85. Malkin's only an 80. They're really starting to drop off. San Jose, Logan Couture, Thomas Hurdle. All right, what about their defense? Sean Couturier is there as well. Uh, all right, nothing too spectacular. St. Louis, Petrangelo, and Shattenkirk are still top of the NHL. Uh, Berglund, ooh, they really don't have a good offensive core, though. Tampa Bay, Stamkos is a 94. Jonathan Druin's a 92. Palat's an 89. Kucherov's an 89. Schwartz, they got Schwartz from St. Louis. Yeah, they have a pretty good top six. 
Uh, defensemen, Hedman and Ristolainen, that's pretty good. They don't have the greatest bottom four, though, right there for uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, Kadri, Kessel, and JVR. All right. Nylander only ended up being an 83. All right. Uh, defenseman, Morgan Riley and Jake Gardner. They don't have it. They could probably put up some goals here in Toronto with that roster. Uh, Vancouver, Shinkrook, Benino, and Zach Cassian. Man, that's not really the greatest. Uh, defenseman, Spies and Crow. Oh, Vancouver's got a really weak team. Washington. All right. Yeah, mid-80s everywhere. Alsner and Carlson still there. Burakovsky, Backstrom, and Johansson. Looks like Ovechkin is retired. That kind of sucks for them. Uh, Winnipeg, Shifley, Evander Kane, Riley Smith. Oh, yeah. I remember this team. This was a, this was a tough team as well. Defenseman, Bogosian, Truba. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. All right, so we're done. Now let's just quickly go through goalies. It's a lot easier to go through it like this. There you go. I'll just stop at the teams with like a 90. There you go. There's a Taz Berman and Jake Smith. I think that, yeah, Chase Marchand. So they have Nate McKinnon, Duchesne, and Chase Marchand all in the same line. Colorado's a powerhouse. Bobrovsky's a 90. All right. Ooh, ooh. Oh, man. Detroit's got no goalies. Google Vaz, their starting goalie. You know, you know what's bad then. Edwards, Jonathan Quick's an 87. Byzantine and Miles. So Byzantine's the starter for uh, Minnesota. Uh, all right. Ooh, Montreal doesn't have Carey Price anymore. Ooh. Or maybe they just haven't dressed him yet. Who knows? Uh, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, Longfist is not there. A lot of teams with the mid-80 goalies. There you go, Gibble and 90. Man, what, what's with all, the, all these teams with mid-80s, but then you have teams with, like, two really good goaltenders. Let's trade one of them away and get a stud somewhere. See what I mean about uh, mid-80s? That's why I think Hope is just fine, man. Got an 86 overall goaltender. There's plenty of teams with 86 overall goaltenders. Be nice to have a, a stud goaltender in there, right? But... Just not meant to be. So let me know what you guys think. The next video, we're going to take the simulation up. I want to really, um, what's it called? Pay attention to the simulation because I do not want to fall down like we did last year and barely make the playoffs. I want to get off to the right start. So you guys saw my line changes with Keith Yandel on the second line. So let me know about that. Penalty kill, let me know about that. And also let me know about that trade. Was it too cheap? I tried to make it so that the New Jersey Devils got a lot because I know they gave up a lot, but I haven't done a blockbuster trade pretty much the entire uh, GM mode. I know you guys have been calling for a big trade. And now we have just got that top two defenseman that we can play for the next 10 years on the Arizona Coyotes. All right, so let me know what you guys think and I will see you in the next one.